is made of people my church is being built my church is made of the finest shades my church is my pay quilt I want to live out on the water I like to look up at the stars I need to be alone for hours I like to play in crowded bars the best songs make me weepy yeah but true love makes me strong I want to figure out what it's all about I want to write another song from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth and serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God and bless his holy name for God is good. And God's steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Please stand now as we join together in singing our community song.
Let us pray. From the moment, Lord, we wake to face another day, we know you are with us, Lord. In soaring highs and in deep despair, you are with us. And today we gather as a church family to draw close to you and pray that through the hours of this day in our travels and work, in our homes and at leisure, in the decisions we must make and in times of stillness and peace, that the Spirit will grant wisdom to guide our actions and that you'll give us the energy to do your work and you'll bless us with peace for our sometimes weary souls. For this day and every day, O Lord, may we always live knowing that you are with us. Amen. Amen. Please say good morning to those whom you're seated near. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Enjoy your podcast. Hey, good. Yeah, it's the Beardsville Blessings, brother. Thomas. Good morning, and thank you for joining us uh, for this service of worship. We especially welcome those of you who are guests or visitors or with us for the first time. And uh, there's a green book on the table in back. If you'd like to leave your name and email address, that would provide us the uh, opportunity to send some stuff your way and let you know about the kinds of things going on in our, our ministry and our church in the weeks ahead. We'll actually be here for uh, uh, two more Sundays after today, uh, next week, when uh, I will preach and our music will be Dana Gillis and her daughter. Dana Gillis and her daughter. Uh, no relation to Dobie Gillis, for those of you who are a little <laughs> older. And uh, I'll preach. That will be a communion service. And then in two weeks, uh, Zach will preach at our uh, Mother's Day service, wrapping things up for uh, our chapel season. Please know that we have uh, treats and coffee uh, following the service in Reed Hall, which is right next door. And finally, I saved the best for last. Uh, could we please have a hand for Amy Shoemaker and Christina Trulio and Bob Hasty for providing music? <laughs> So uh, other than uh, taking a deep breath and enjoying the next 40 minutes or so, there's one task that you have, uh, and it's going to occur in the next three minutes. And what you need to do is there's a song in the uh, bulletin called Peace Like a River. Lyrics are pretty simple. What we're going to do <laughs> is jazz it up just a bit. This is the community church's uh, reggae version of Peace Like a River. <laughs> And your only goal is to have some fun and uh, add a little soul to it. And so if you want to put on your shades or you want to clap or you want to dance or you want to go hallelujah or whatever, uh, let's have some fun as we stand and sing Peace Like a River. And I want to hear all of you in the upper deck back oh, there, yeah. please. <laughs>
wear these chains like charms. You are the bracelets like ancestors. Sometimes they keep me up. Late night clattering the These are the velvet scars cut myself just trying to get some I reached out to breathe again like a bad penny he was there. He said I wear the chains I in life, I wrote them note by note, one by one, link by link, coast by coast. And each one glittered for a while, faded like a smile. Pieces of the past, this I can't forget. Talisman of time, rusted with regret. Each one glittered for a while, faded like a smile. I am Marley's rose. Wear these chains like charms, they are the bracelets that lie against my I think I'll start having visions. That's the kind of job, the kind of job I'd like. Yes, I think I'll start having visions. I could bring it on strong. I could bring it all right. When I have my first vision, the darkness will pass. I'll be bathed in light. Then I'll start the mission. The mission of truth and holy might See me, see me talking to you I can feel the same way you do Hear me, hear me pleading with you I was chosen, I was told to I was told Find the key, I'll 
I'll drink the wine. There's got to be some place better. Yeah, a better life than this hell of mine. When I have my first vision, the darkness will pass. I'll be bathed in light. Then I'll start the mission, the mission of truth and holy might. See me, see me talking to you I can feel the same way you do Hear me, hear me pleading with you I was chosen, I was having visions Having visions, oh yeah Having visions Having visions, that's a perfect song to lead into this sermon. You'll have to connect the dots. The scripture this morning is selections from Job 38. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the universe? Tell me. If you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Little hint of condescension there. Or who dangled the plumb line on it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth the constellations in their season? You might kind of hear a little chuckling in amidst those lines. That would be appropriate. You might recall from last week the dessert mentioned in Tom's Easter sermon last Sunday, he spoke of how some of us in the Easter Brunch Club, EBC, might celebrate the holiday with Cherry's Jubilee, a dessert made with cherries and liqueur dramatically flambéed 
often poured over vanilla ice cream. It's enough to make one glad to be a member of EBC. In good standing, I did a little research on Cherry's Jubilee. August Escoffier concocted Cherry's Jubilee for Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee celebrations in 1897. Cherry's Jubilee is a symbol of a great culminating celebration. So I titled this sermon Cherry's Jubilee because I intend to share with you and celebrate with you one of the great spiritual insights that can make all the difference in Christ's teaching known as the wisdom of a child. In Buddhism, the beginner's mind. The calligraphy here in Japanese is beginner's mind. In the passage I read from Job, the Almighty rebukes in no uncertain terms those who assume understanding. The rebuke is still valid these many years later. According to NASA.gov, roughly 68% of the universe is dark energy. Did you know this? We know the amount of dark energy because we can measure the universe expansion. Otherwise, dark energy is a complete mystery. Dark matter, not to be confused with dark energy, constitutes another 27% of the universe. Also a mystery. The rest, everything on earth, everything ever observed with all our instruments. Lydia said, even the sun? Yep. All normal matter, normal, adds up to less than 5% of the universe. These numbers tell us we don't know much about the universe. Shochin, again, over here, this is beginner's mind. Shochin, a word from Zen Buddhism, meaning beginner's mind. This is the kind of mind and attitude that Job's God would not rebuke. It refers to having an attitude of openness and a lack of preconception. The Zen masters say, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. Christ said, whoever enters the kingdom of God enters only as a little child. Beginner's mind requires practice and usually the guidance of a master, teacher, a mentor. Mentor, a Greek word, a Greek name, adopted from the name of the teacher of Telemachus in Homer's Odyssey. Do you have a memorable mentor? By the way, in my way of thinking, mentors can come from literature and scripture as well. Remember your mentor for a moment. What is your mentor's name? What do they look like? What are a few words of wisdom they said that stick with you? Perhaps my most significant spiritual mentor is a man named Hans Peter Royer from the tiny village of Ramsau in a beautiful valley of the Alps. Hans Peter was pretty extraordinary at everything he did, a skier, climber, mountaineer, parasailer, certified Austrian mountain guide, teacher, preacher, husband, father, with a sharp humor and wit. Hans Peter had an intimidating presence. Sharp-featured, ice-blue eyes, 
blonde hair, rugged physique of a mountaineer. One of the words of wisdom that rings in my ear from, from Hans Peter was, you're being a coward. Not exactly warm and fuzzy. This phrase, though, has many useful applications for a mentee. Bonafide mentors, perhaps especially Austrian mountain guide mentors accustomed to severe mountain conditions, are given to speaking brutally honest to, to mentees for their transformation, guiding a mentee first to a decimation of old habits and on to eventual transformation. What some on Easter Day might refer to as resurrection, it was noted that today is Orthodox Easter. For the Western Church, it's the week after, obviously, Easter, when Jesus' friends are encountering a Jesus who walks through walls, transformed somehow beyond the typical physical. As a result of these encounters, the friends of Jesus are also transformed. Hans Peter's treasured scripture passage was Romans 12 too. He had the verse inscribed on his wedding band and his wife, Hannah Laura's wedding band, do not be conformed to this world. Literally, it means age. But, and this is the part that was inscribed, be transformed by the renewing of your minds. The passage continues, so that you will be able to discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. By the, grace I say, by the grace I say to everyone, this is still Paul, I say to everyone among you, do not think yourself more highly than you ought to think. Beginner's mind. A favorite allegory that Hans Peter would tell concerning the spiritual life was the story of Mr. One-Dimensional, sometimes called Mr. Flat. Have you heard this story? Mathematician Edwin Abbott wrote Flatland in 1884 in an attempt to introduce the idea of a more than three-dimensional universe. It was the story of a humble square, Mr. Flat, living on a plane who was one day visited by a three-dimensional being, Mr. Sphere who propels him into the magnificent world of solids. In this volumetric world, Mr. Flat beholds a three-dimensional version of himself, Mr. Cube. And Mr. Flat begins dreaming about pushing on into the other dimensions, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth dimension, why not a hypercube and a hyper-hypercube, he wonders. Back in Flatland, Mr. Flat is deemed a lunatic and locked in an insane asylum. While Mr. Flat is arguing for other dimensions of space, he is also making a case for other dimensions of being. For me, Every year, one of the mightiest practices of Easter and the days around it and after it is practicing beginner's mind, opening myself to all possibilities in the way of a child. How many dimensions am I willing to operate in? Quantum physics postulates there are ten dimensions. How much dark energy and dark matter have I accessed? What if we had prevailing attitudes 
open to possibility? How would this change our outlook on life? How might it expand our spiritual life? Bonafide mentors like Hans Peter take us to hard to imagine and disruptive places that make us wiser than we were before. Shinzen Young said this about his mentor and teacher, Sasaki Roshi, who used to quite regularly hold Zen retreats at a Trappist monastery where Father Thomas Keating was the abbot. He writes, Roshi would go in and put on the Trappist robes, and he'd make up Christian koans for the monks. In one of them, Sasaki Roshi said, resurrection is the heart of Buddhism. Unless you understand resurrection, you cannot understand Buddhism. Dying is the easy part. Resurrection is the hard part. Nodding, yeah, yeah. Any religion that doesn't teach resurrection is a false religion. He was talking about his own experience, which is why he would say it with such conviction. Jung went on to explain, do you understand what Roshi meant when he said resurrection is the heart of Buddhism? I'm sure there was a lot of this. Well, it goes back to the experience of no self and full self. Allowing the self to dissolve is half of the enlightenment experience. Allowing the self to reform without interference, that's resurrection, isn't it? On Easter Sunday and the week after, when we find ourselves maybe hedging, demurring, maybe scoffing. I heard at least one scoff this week when I was running this sermon past someone. <laughs> or avoiding the resurrection altogether. Get in and get out. A spiritual master might say something decimating, such as, of course, you live in the spiritual one dimension, like the square. While there is a multi-dimension to be experienced, cubes and hypercubes abound. So on Easter, or the week after, or any other day, when you find yourselves and I find myself more of a square than a cube. Let the EBC dessert, Cherry's Jubilee, be symbolic reminder of the great celebration of beginner's mind, open to all possibility, all experience, the beginning and culmination of spiritual wisdom. And if you want to know where to go for some killer Cherry's Jubilee, I have no idea. <laughs> Ask the EBC chairman or find a Cherry's Jubilee mentor. I heard it used to be Sabatino's downtown. I wish you the beginner's mind. As we pass the hats this morning, please know how grateful we are for all of your generosity that is such a vital part of making what happens here this morning a reality. And now another tune by the Sweet Maurice. It's not right for you, but it's so right for me. Feel 
sounds like something brand new You don't feel a thing If I mention blue You insist on brave What I'm asking you You refuse to say Was Ray Kroc, the McDonald's tycoon, put beginner's mind, when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you rot. Stay green, my friends, <laughs> and keep craving Cherry's Jubilee, spiritually speaking. And the people said, Amen. Amen. 